now watching my monitor in this in this case. Um, this is actually a screen a screen capture, okay? So a screenshot. But this is almost what you should be watching to looking at. So here in the middle, you have this well dark mm, uh, dark avatar where what I'm streaming. Uh, sharing um, on my monitor will be and on the right there is the chat the chat is the place where you can discuss and exchange messages with all the people uh, participating to this webinar and at the bottom there is of course the text box you can use to um, enter your messages and send them to other users now here at the top right uh, on top of the text box of the chat there is an option, chat, a sort of drop-up menu, let's say this way. You have two options. To send a message as a standard chat message, so, well, everyone will uh, read it, and then mark that message as a question. This is quite important, and I suggest you strongly to use this way to mark questions so we, the team members present in the webinar will be, will be able to have a list, a specific list for these questions and answer to any doubts you will have. So I will be starting. The webinar should have a duration of about 30 minutes, uh, half hour. And well, I think we, it's time to start it. So let's go to Anima. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, I won't be uh, discussing how the interface works or how the basics of the, the program works, okay? I will just be um, explaining the topic of today, which is, as I said, edit poses and motion groups. Okay, so I will get rid of this scene. This is the standard scene uh, in Anima, and I will load. Sorry, I will load my project. Okay, open the new project. I create it. Okay, here motion clips. Here it is. Open, and now I will be asked to, well, which scene, scene I want to use. Well, I will open the table scene. Now, this is actually, okay, this is something shouldn't have happened, but no problem at all, okay? This is the live issues we have, okay. I have assigned, I'm assigning actually this character to this table. Okay, well, I will do this a different way. We'll select the table, I create it, and I will assign this character to the crowd list. Okay, I will set it to one character since I'm, I am I only have this, and I will click generate. Okay, and it places this character here. But actually, I don't want this character here, so I will just click and drag and move it to this other seat. Okay, that's fine. Now, why I'm showing you this? Because this is this represents a typical situation where, well, we have our background model, in this case, a table, a cha some chairs here, and we have created this table here and assigned this character. But if we have a closer look here, we see that we have a couple of issues. Well, actually, just a second. Now we have a couple of issues before we had just one. Okay. The two issues are, the first one are the hands of this, um, this guy are not placed on top of the, of the table, okay? So this is something I want to tackle. And the other one that I want to tackle is the fact that the feet are not placed on top of the floor, okay? So why is this important? Well, uh, Anima is thought to be quite straightforward, very simple, but at the same time, very effective. So we know how to create a background model on top of which we can create simulation elements to create our simulations in Anima and then integrate them into our uh, still renderings, animations, or perhaps real-time renders such as Unreal Engine. So, but in this case, for example, we could the, uh, have the, the need to, we have a sort of closer look, okay? to on this this character and we see that these these little aspects are not fine for us okay are not good so how we could change it one thing is that we are using uh, a standard animation i mean an animation that comes within anima so let's say we want to use this animation but this animation doesn't actually adjust perfectly to our model and this can happen several times so how we solve this it, this is very simple. 
Today we will start uh, talking about a different mode of working inside Anima. This mode is called editing mode. Now at the top right we have the mode panel where the drawing method, mm, mode is here shown. Actually when we work with background models, uh, simulation elements and actors in this, in the scene, we are working in the drawing mode. Okay, But when we want to work with poses, motion clips, and in general, we want to customize our actors, for example, and their motion clips, we need to go to, we need to switch to the editing mode. We have two ways of doing this. We can use the toggle button here. As you can see, this is toggle to switch between editing, the editing mode and the drawing mode. But another way of doing this is to right click on the library actors on top of the actor we want in this case to change to work with okay so right click and here we have the option edit okay now before doing this i want to clarify one thing uh, today we will see two ways of changing poses and motion clips in general okay the first way is to edit uh, the pose of an actor specific to a motion clip okay so i will show you this to do this what i'm i will do is to create a duplicate of this actor why is that because this is a system actor okay so what the first best practice in here is always to create a duplicate so we don't change something hmm, that it's part of anime itself. In this case, this is a system character actor that comes within anime. Okay, changing a system character could do to some uh, little issues sometimes. If we want to reuse that character in another project, we would have those changes also in that project. So always work with duplicates. This is a suggestion actually, not only for system characters, actors in this case, but also for other um, actors, such as the purchased one, and in general also for motion clips, okay? So to duplicate a character, it's very simple. So we right click on top of it. Sorry, we actually cannot do this in the drawing mode, okay? So we right click on it, click on edit, and we switch to the editing mode. And as you can see, the interface has changed, okay? I will just make it this, okay? So to have a bit, mm, wider the, the viewport. As you can see, the viewport is split into vertical viewports, okay? On the left, we have the, the character, texture, in the rest pose, position, and animation. As you can see, the timeline is a simple one, is not as the, um, the one we have in drawing mode. We can actually only play or stop the animation. By default, the animation will start uh, playing, okay? And this is quite useful. Okay, so here we can go around to the orbit the character and see how the animations applied, the motion clips applied to this character will uh, perform. Okay, on the right side, we have the same character without mm, textures, but with all the controls of uh, the structure, the skeleton bones structure of this actor. Okay, one thing I want to point out, first of all, is that According to, you see, if I place, I place my, the point of view from on the side, we have different controls than on front. This is because there are a lot of controls, okay? So we cannot display all of them on top of each other. Uh, this would be quite confusing. So this way we can handle better the, the work, okay? But before doing anything, on the left, we have the library actors and the library motion clips. Okay, first thing we will do is to create a duplicate of this actor. So right click and this time the duplicate function actually is the only one is uh, shown. So I will left click on it and a new copy of this actor will be created, but where? Well, in the library actor, there is uh, there are several, um, several categories. The system category, it's quite self-explanatory. The purchased one, as you can see here, I have four purchased models. I purchased in, in the web, in the Access Design uh, website. Okay, these are part of the Metropolis Library. And then there is the project. 
okay? And here appears exactly the duplicate uh, I've created. Okay, and this icon here always in everywhere in Anima stands for a custom asset, whether it is a custom imported asset or a duplicate. But before starting working on this, I want to show you that this character, which is part of this project and not of other projects, for this reason, it's, it's placed in the project uh, category, actually corresponds to a different, uh, to a specific file in the project folder, okay? So I will show you here. Here I am in the motion clips folder, which is the project where everything, every asset of the project is stored. And inside this project folder is the libraries folder, okay? And here we have two folders, the clips and the models. The models contains all the custom models, in this case, the duplicated ones, and the clips models contain the contains the motion clips okay so if i enter the models as you can see here i have a new file which corresponds exactly to this new character i've duplicated okay why is this important because this way we can copy and paste new characters to other projects and reuse our work or just create a library in some part of our hard disks our drives and so on and so forth okay so keep in mind this is quite interesting now we can start work. One important thing to understand in Anima, in the editing mode, is that these two libraries on the left, the Actors Library and the Motion Clips Library, are very important in which way. According to the combination of selection we have between these two panels, we will be able to do some things and not others. Okay? So in this case, I selected this actor and I have it here uh, represented in the viewport, and I have selected in the motion clip library the default motion clip. Now, we don't want to work this way, okay? Because this way, each change made on this actor would, since it's made of on the, let's say, system motion clip, would affect every motion clip assigned to this character. Okay, so this is not something we really want to do often. Okay, so it's important you to know this, but this is something I strongly suggest you to think to be careful about. Okay, so how we can change the animation, hmm, the, the position of the hands? It's very simple. We have to select the actor and then select that animation we want to uh, adjust. How we know that what is the animation? Very simple. We go back to the drawing mode. Here, we select the character, and here in the properties where it uh, says actor clip, we go to the chair clip, and here is the sitting idle main. Okay, here we have a list of all the sitting animations uh, that we can assign. Okay, the sitting, sitting idle male is the animation we want to, to use. So we go back to editing mode, okay, and here in the motion clip library, here on top is the folder, the, sorry, the search filter. So we can start to sitting, okay? And here we have the sitting idle mail, okay? So we select it and there we have it. Hmm? As you can see, as soon as I have something written in this filter, the search field within text box, we have filter the results. So I select the actor in the actor's library and select the motion clip I want to work with. We actually are not going to work with the motion group. We are going to work with the actor, okay? We are creating a change related only to this motion group. It means that this actor will be, will, will apply these modifications, these changes only when this motion clips it's being used, okay? So now what I want to do is, as you can see here, I have a preview of what this animation does. Okay, I will keep this, uh, leave this animation playing. And what I will do, since the hand are related to the forearm and the arm, what I'm going to do is just to go here on the side view, let's say side view here, and I will use here this control. As you can see here, each time I go over a control of the skeleton of the bone, appears a tooltip. And that tooltip 
tells me which is the offset value it's been applied at that moment. This value is a value is applied on top of the rest pose, standard pose for this character. Okay, so this is quite interesting. Now, what I'm going to do is to click and drag. Okay, and as you can see, well, what I have to do is not raise the forearms and then the, uh, the hands, but to lower them. Okay, so something like this. Okay, now if I want to, as you, as you can see here, I have this toggle uh, activated. This is the symmetry toggle. This lets me work on both sides of the um, of the actor at the same time. Okay, but sometimes we want to break this. Okay, so I will break this. I will mm, toggle this, and what I want to create some mm, asymmetry between these two hands. So I will just open a bit more, perhaps that hand, as you can see here. Okay. So now what I have to do is go back to the drawing mode and see what happens. Yes, we could do that, but we would lose the, the, the changes because, because as you can see here, we have the set button activated because we made changes. So we need to left click on this, set the changes, and then go back to the drawing mode. Okay, so we use this toggle here and we go back. But if I select this character here and I orbit it, it doesn't seem to have solved anything. Why is that? Well, as you can see here in the library actors on the left, we have the two characters here, the uh, duplicated one and the original one. Well, as you can see here, the character we have selected in the scene is the original one, not the duplicated one. So we have to switch them. Okay, so it's very simple. Just left click and drag on top of this character and you should see the difference applied. You see, you see, now I have the, the hands on top of the uh, um, of the table. Actually, probably I should raise them up a little bit more. Okay. Now, why is that? Why is, why has happened this? Because we have worked on the pose of this actor related to what motion clip to the sitting idle male. We haven't changed this changed this motion clip. We have changed the pose of this character related to this motion clip, okay? So when this character, the new one, you see here the dot and the dash one in the name, that is the, the new one. Hmm? When this actor is affected, is assigned to this motion clip, actually is the vice versa. This motion clip is assigned to this character, then this character will react and then apply those changes, okay? So now I will Control S, save the scene, just to be sure not to lose anything. And I will go back to the editing mode and do the same thing. I will reactivate the, uh, the symmetry. Actually, you know what? You know what? Um, I've seen that this arm, this hand has the problem. The other one, no. So I will just change this arm, actually. I will raise it a bit more up, okay? Save it and go back to the drawing here drawing mode, and now we should see actually a better result, okay? So as you can see, this is very simple what we have done. We could have done uh, many, many more things, but in this case, it's not necessary, okay? So this is, this is quite, quite important because uh, even if already with what we have, animations, actors, we can create many things in, in anima, this way, we don't have to just use those animations as, the, as they are. We can make changes, make corrections, okay? The other thing I want to solve is this issue we have with the feet. But in this case, we won't use the, uh, the editing mode. It's just an option we need to use here to activate here in the table. In the table properties is the total chair option, okay? And by default, this is set to no. This is used usually when we have chairs taller than the standard size Anima is, uh, is using, okay? If we set it to yes, what Anima does is to push the, um, the feet uh, down till the um, closest collision below the feet. Hmm? Now, this is sometimes it's not possible. If we have no collision or, or the collision is too far away, that this won't work, but in this case, it's very simple. Okay, so keep in mind that there are some limitations, but in most of the cases, it's possible with a couple of clicks to solve uh, any issue.
Okay, so as you can see here, we have solved the problem that in an another situation would have um, uh, needed to uh, re-export the animation, re-import the animation, and duplicate the animation, so make more assets. Okay, this way it's quite more flexible. Okay, perfect. Now, I will open a new scene to show you a different situation. Well, a different situation, but we, that we can tackle the same way. Okay, so this way, for example, I will load a new, another scene. This is the catwalk scene. Okay. And here you have a little more complex scene. Okay, so another perfect mm, scene where we could mm, create. This is a, a fashion catwalk. We have models, these uh, women mm, going through, and other people. Here we have even uh, the standard character interest in the, in the catwalk here in Anima. Okay, and other people see it and watching this in this simulation. Okay, so. I want to point out this character here, hmm? this woman here. This woman is actually a character I purchased in uh, um, in the web web design access, um, uh, sorry, access design website. <laughs> it's part of the Metropoli library, okay. And if I hit play, hmm, you can see when they go here. I will just go here a bit. Okay, I will stop the animation right there. And I will scrap the timeline. And as you can see here, you see what ha what's happening here. Okay, this part of the hand, this hand is mm, passing through the hips. This is something that could happen sometime with some of the models mm, we mm, we buy. It's not very uh, usual with those you buy on uh, the uh, from the Metropoli Library since they are quite well uh, set up. But sometimes can happen, and of course can happen when we import custom models. Okay, so how we solve this? Well, actually, we solve them, solve them the same way. So I select this character. Actually, I have it here. Where it is? Here it is. Okay, I select this character, and now I go to the editing mode. Now I have this character selected. By the way, by the way, here we have another toggle. Here. Mm -hmm which let us synchronize the two views. Now, I usually don't synchronize them, okay? Because when I want to work on this, on the structure, I also want to be being able to uh, orbit around the animated character to see where we have problems, okay? So what I'm going to do now is to select the motion clip uh, that is giving me the problem. So in this case, there are no motion clips. Why is that? Because we have still this filter active. So I will clear this filter and I will look for uh, this specific motion clip, which is called, uh, which starts with elegant. Okay, so let's click elegant. And as you can see here, I will select. So again, I have selected here the actor in the elaborate actors and then select the motion clip I want to relate with this actor. Okay, so now I want to solve these issues I have here. Well, the first thing I will get, I will do is just to activate the symmetry and from the front view, I will just open the arms. And as you can see, perhaps they are a bit too open. Okay, so I will do something like this. Okay, something like this. Well, it seems that it doesn't work, okay? Now, keep in mind that here we don't have an actual undo or redo, okay? we have. A couple of buttons here. Okay, these are very interesting because the first one hmm, let me reset to the rest pose. Okay, to the original one. As you can see here, I still have these problems. Okay, the second one is uh, the one that let lets me switch back, revert to the last saved change. So saving it's quite important in this case. So for example, if I want to open this. Okay, and um, well, let's say that it works. It works uh, well, but perhaps they are too wide. At the same time, I want to, for example, close a bit mm, the, the hands. So what I will do is just to use this, okay? And as you can see, this works. Now, what I want to do is, well, I can use this button since I know I can click to go back mm, to undo, let's say, this to revert from this last change. 
But if I click here, as you can see, both changes have been reverted. Why is that? Because we didn't save anything, okay? So if you want to be able to use this, to control this, I suggest you to save off, okay? Or at least when to save when you got the result, the correct result of that part of the uh, body, the structure you were working on, and then going on, okay? So I will do this, something like this, okay? But as you can see here, I have the thumb that still passed through the hips through the leg. So I will save this at the moment. And now what I'm going to do is to work only on the thumbs. Okay, so I will switch to this control and click on this and I will close this thumb a bit. You see? There is still a bit of, of compenetration here, but we can solve this, okay, by, for example, open a bit the the hands and now it should work fine okay important thing always to orbit around the character when it's animating to see if there are any other issues we could correct and now that we have the final result we want to uh, we, we want it then we can save okay someone could uh, tell me but you have saved on top of uh, the original character yes this is for two reasons. First one, to show you that actually you can do this. But in this case, I'm working with a purchased, a purchased model. This means that this is not a system model and means that I can always go back to my website, web access design uh, web account and download it back and then copy and paste it on top of what I had and then go back to the original one, okay? This is a bit trickier doing for the system actor since it comes with the installation of Anima, okay? But in every case, I strongly suggest you to create a duplicate, even for those who chased one, okay? Now, this is one way of doing things, okay? By the way, let's see the result on the catwalk, okay? So let's go back to the um, drawing mode, and now I hit play, and as you can see, we will see this when this woman will pass through here, and as you can see, we don't have any more this problem, okay? So this is very, very useful. Now, we go back a bit more to the editing mode, okay? So for example, we go here, and we have a look at these two buttons here, right below the reset to, revert to the rest pose, and to last saved pose. These two uh, let me copy the first one and paste this pose to onto other characters. This is very, very useful. Let's say that we have another character with similar problems. So we could copy and paste this work on that character and then adjust only those little differences that we have. So we don't have to redo all the work altogether. Okay? So this is very, very important. Hmm? Okay. Said that, let's go back to the drawing mode. As you can see here is going to switch back, going through the two modes, and I want to show you a different thing. Now, yes, I will create a very straight, straight um, path, okay, very simple situation. As you can see, we can create path and simulation elements on top of the void. In this case, we don't need actually a background model to being able to create this, okay. And I will use this character here. And this old man. I will generate just one, okay? And I want it to be placed at the beginning of this path. And this path I will, will be set to forward, okay? So I will click generate, okay? That's it, perfect. Now, what I want to do now is, first of all, convert this character to, sorry, select this character to manual, okay? So I will be able to change specifically some options. And the first option I want to change is the speed of this character, okay? I will set it to 150%. Now, as you can see here, as soon as I've increased the speed, then the character switched to the running animation, okay? And which is the run animation is using this character here. By the way, this is how this character runs, okay? So let's, okay, scrap back to the beginning. Now, the animation that this character is using 
is uh, found here in the after clip list under locomotion run clip. And in this case, is the running nail. Okay. If I select here, you can see we only have two male running motion clips or animation. They are exactly the same. Okay. In anime, are called motion clips. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we have more than mm, several characters and we only have two running animations or in general two animations per type, per kind, uh, we would like to have more, add more variations. Okay. So what we could do actually is to create new motion clips starting from the existing ones. Okay, so we can create a duplicate again to, first of all, not working on a system motion clip, okay, and then make changes to, to that motion clip. And then every actor to which that motion clip will be assigned will be using those changes, okay? So in this case, we are going to work, this is the second method, we are going to work directly on top of the motion group, not the actor, okay? We are not changing the pose, we are changing the actual animation. So to do this, we're going to go again to the editing mode hmm, with this character here, actually. And uh, we are going to, well, here in the library of motion clip, here the search field for the filters, hmm, I will start running, okay? Just with a run, it's enough. I will set it to run, running slow, which is actually the animation hmm, I'm going to work with. If I select this, now you see that animation applied to this actor, okay? Now, one important thing is that I have this actor with a specific pose, okay? This motion clip has a specific, uh, well, mm, behavior with this character, okay? I want to create a new version of this. But keep in mind one thing, that now I have the actor selected and the motion clip. So if I would keep going this way, I would be working as, exactly as I've done till now. But I want to do a different thing. First thing, I want to create a duplicate of this motion clip. So I will right click, duplicate. Now, this motion clip, again, will appear here in the project category. And it will appear also where? Here in the clips folder I've shown you before. You see? So also for motion clip 2, you can just copy and paste to other projects. OK? Very simple. Now, with this motion clip selected, if we want to work only on this specific motion clip, what we need to do is to select in the library actors, not a specific actor, but the system actor here, called also the global actor, okay? Now, here when we have the global actor, actually we can switch sexes hmm, for this global actor with this toggle here, we can change between female and male. Okay, in this case, it's male, so we will keep this. Okay, so now we have the, a different combination in selection here. As I told you before, be careful with this, but this is important. Now, if we want to work on the motion clip and not the actor, we need to select the global actor and then the motion clip. Okay, so what I want now is, since this is an old man, I want to convey some, some something like this, this person is a bit old, so it will um, get tired quite fast, okay? So I want to convey this sensation, sensation of some, someone uh, tired while running, okay? So first thing I want to do is to, uh, well, let's affect, for example, the head, the neck, okay, and the head, okay? This is someone, ah, I, I cannot do this, I cannot do this, something like this, no? This is the idea. One, one thing is. The other thing is, for example, trying to, hmm, okay, to have this, hmm, the, 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 the arms. What we can do, we are working in symmetry, okay? I will break this, the symmetry, and I will, for example, open an arm a bit more than, than the other, okay? And, for example, hmm, the other, this hand, open it a bit more, okay? So to create, uh, Something like this, oh, more variations. Okay. And the other thing I want is to convey also weight. Mm? So I will use here, I will lower the hips. As you can see here, the feet are going below the, 
the floor in this view, okay, if I keep going, and I, I will exaggerate this to make you see, okay, I will, here the feet are below the, the ground, okay, but here what happens is that the character has bent the, the legs, okay, so this is the idea. Hmm? So now we have a different, we could also open, change a bit this, well, let's not change this leg, but the other one, okay? For example, what we could do is also change, sorry, here, okay? Like bend the, the head a bit here. So having someone that it's not, it's very, very tired to of running, okay? So now that we have this, we have a different motion clip, running motion clip, a different variation, okay? We actually can also, we could change here the name. Mm -hmm. We could say, well, let's give it a more, I will sell right slow tire, something like this. And of course, I have to click save. So I will save it. And now mm -hmm. I will go to the back to the drawing mode. Mm -hmm. And here, what I will do is to change the square, the chair clip, sorry, chair clip to, sorry, not the chair clip, uh, I, I confused myself. Uh, locomotion run clip from running mail to running slow tire. Okay, so now if I hit spacebar, we have a different way of running. Well, it doesn't look exactly as I, as I thought, but it could be someone that has some issues in brain, okay? Well, the idea here behind this is that here in Anima, you already have a quite interesting library of animations and you can start from them and creating variations, okay? This is very simple, very fast, as you can see, and it's very powerful, the, the whole tools, number of tools you have in the editing mode. Okay, so to recap a bit, we have two ways of working here in Anima about editing poses and editing motion clips. We can, let's switch back to editing mode, okay? We can, on one side, select a specific actor, okay? Well, let's select this one, a woman, okay? And then a specific, let's clear here, a specific animation and make changes to the pose of this actor. In this case, this way, having selected the actor and the motion clip, we are relating those changes to the, that pose of that actor to that motion clip. So those changes are applied only when that motion clip is used by that actor, okay? On the other side, if we select the motion clip and we select the global actor, what we are doing is changing the motion clip, the animation. Well, actually, the structure of the bones of the skeleton for that animation changing, affecting, of course, the animation. So this way we can create different variations. And this is very, very useful, okay? And very, very powerful, okay? So you can think this to be applied to those animation and actors you already have within Anima or to those you purchase, you create and import uh, custom inside Anima and, of course, also for motion groups, okay? One important thing is to understand the differences of applying animations of these changes, how these animation affects uh, characters, actors, okay? One thing is important, is that motion clip changes, those made on a specific motion clip to the global actor, mm, are applied to all the actors to uh, which this animation is assigned, okay? On the other side, when we change the pose of a specific actor for a specific motion clip, that change is applied only to that actor with that motion clip. This is very, very important to understand, okay? So, well, for today, actually, we, we've seen everything uh, I wanted to, to show you, okay? I hope you have enjoyed this uh, webinar. As you can see here, more people have coming in. And uh, I ask you five more minutes to wait. I will be back in a moment to say goodbye, to, to close uh, this 
Okay, we have a couple of polls we would like you to answer to to help us improve and uh, uh, better this fantastic new software uh, developed by Access Design. So see you in five, seven minutes. Okay, see you soon.
And here I am again, as promised. So, as I told you, thank you very much for being with us and uh, stay tuned because in the next uh, weeks there will be more of Anima and about how to custom uh, more elements in as such as actors and motion clips, okay? So for today's um, it, it ends here. See you soon.